Welcome to Right Triangle Trigonometry. Today's objectives are to understand and use trigonometric relationships of acute angles and triangles and to determine the side lengths of right triangles by using trig functions. So trigonometry is the study of lengths and angles of triangles. So in this section, we're going to be studying different aspects of trigonometry, but we should know that trigonometry studies the relationship between the lengths and angles of triangles. So in this first section here, we're going to talk about trigonometric ratios. So what is a trig ratio? A trigonometric ratio compares the lengths of two sides of a right triangle. So it compares the lengths of two sides of a right triangle. Now usually when you've been talking about angles in the past, you use a different symbol. For example, sometimes you may use this to represent angle. In this section we're going to use this symbol right here. This symbol is called theta. And we're going to use this to describe acute angles. So now that we've discussed trigonometry and trig ratios, let's describe the three main trig ratios. Now the three main trig ratios are sine, cosine, and tangent. Now the sine of an angle is the ratio of the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine of an angle is the ratio of the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And tangent is the ratio of the opposite over the adjacent. Now you may have heard of SOHCAHTOA in the past, and that actually may help you in this uh, section to remember these ratios. So let's think about what that means. So we have SO, since sine refers to the opposite over the hypotenuse. We use ka to remember cosine, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. And then for tangent, we use toa, which is to remember it's the opposite over the adjacent. So let's examine the ratios based on this triangle that we see here. So if we're going to compare the sine, cosine, and tangent of this triangle, we're going to look at our angle here, theta. So if we want to figure out the ratio of the angle theta with respect to sine, all we do is look at the opposite, which is 4, and the hypotenuse, which is 5. This is how we express the sine of angle theta. So then let's look at the cosine. So the cosine of angle theta, we look at the adjacent, which is 
this side 3, over the hypotenuse, which is 5. And this is how we express the cosine of angle theta. And finally, for tangent of theta, we look at the opposite, which is 4, over the adjacent, which is 3. And this is how we express the tangent of theta. In this example, we want to find the value of sine, cosine, and tangent for the functions of theta. So let's start off with sine. So if we want to find the sine of theta, we'll remember our trig ratios, which is so, ka, toa. So since we're starting off with sine, we want to do the opposite over the hypotenuse. Now we base this where this angle is. So opposite of theta is 15. So sine of theta is 15 over the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is 39. So here's our first trig ratio. Let's do cosine. So find the cosine of theta. Now cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent to that angle is the one that's right next to it, it's 36. The hypotenuse is 39. So the cosine of theta is 36 over 39. Last one is the tangent of theta. Now tangent is opposite over adjacent. So the tangent opposite of theta is 15 and the adjacent is 36 and there's the tangent of angle theta now these fractions are not fully simplified so we have to reduce them 15 over 39 actually becomes 5 over 13 36 over 39 becomes 12 over 13 and 15 over 36 becomes 5 over 12. So always remember, simplify your fractions. Now we can use special right triangles to help find the trig ratios of certain angles. So we learned three trig ratios today. So we learned sine, we learned cosine, and we learned tangent today. So we can use these three trig ratios to help us find the ratio of two sides. Now instead of using theta, we actually have angles now to work with. So first we're going to work with the 30, 60, 90 triangle, which is this one right here. This is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So let's start off with the angle 30. So if I want to find the sine of 30, I know that, that ratio is just the opposite opposite of 30 is 1 over the hypotenuse which is 2 so the sine of 30 degrees equals 1 over 2 now let's try for the other acute angle the sine of 60 same idea sine is opposite over hypotenuse opposite of 60 is the square root of 3 and the hypotenuse is 2 if you ever struggle to remember the ratios, I always recommend to use so ka to. Now let's continue this for cosine and for tangent. Now the cosine 
of 30, we know cosine is adjacent over the hypotenuse. So adjacent to 30 is the square root of 3, and the hypotenuse is 2. Now the cosine for 60, 60 is over here, adjacent to 60 is 1, and the hypotenuse is 2. Now let's do tangent. Tangent of 30. Now tangent is opposite over adjacent. So that gives us 1 over the square root of 3. But we can't leave that like that, so we want to change it to be the square root of 3 over 3. Last one, the tangent of 60 equals the square root of 3 over 1. Or we can just say the square root of 3. We can also use these three trig functions for a 45-45-90 triangle, which is this one right here. So if I wanted to find the sine of 45, it's easy. Sine is just opposite over the hypotenuse, which would be 1 over the square root of 2. But we can't leave that as 1 over square root of 2. So we fix that to become square root of 2 over 2. We can't have a square root in the denominator, so we have to change that fraction. Now, I don't have to do it twice because the acute angles here are both 45. So let's move on to cosine. The cosine of 45. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So once again, it's the same thing. It's 1 over the square root of 2 or square root of 2 over 2. Last one we'll do is tangent. Now the tangent of 45 is going to be opposite, which is 1, over adjacent, which is 1. So 1 over 1 is just 1. And this is how we use special right triangles to find different trig functions based on specific angles. If you had trouble with me going from 1 over square root of 2 to this, I suggest you review how to rationalize the denominator if we have a square root down there. Now let's find side lengths using trig functions to find the value of x. So this angle here is 60. If this is 90, that means that this final angle has to be 30 degrees. So we have here is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Now they're asking us to find the value of x. So what we have to do is set up a trig function. So let's think about what we know. Based off of this angle 60, we know the opposite, and we also know the hypotenuse. So think. You know the opposite side and the hypotenuse. So which trig function do you want to use? I know the opposite and the hypotenuse, so I want to use sine. Now I need an angle, so I want to find the sine of 60. Now what does the sine of 60 equal? Well, sine of anything equals the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So this is the function that we're working with. Let's plug in values for that. So for the left side, we know what the sine of 60 is. We did it on the previous slide. The sine of 60 equals the square root of 3 over 2. Now in this example, what's opposite of 60 degrees? Well, opposite of 60 degrees is this value x. What's the hypotenuse here? 100. So now, I have these two fractions that are equal to each other, 
and I can solve for x. So I cross multiply and I have 2x equals 100 times the square root of 3. When I get to this step, I want to solve for x. Divide both sides by 2. I'm with x equals 50 times the square root of 3. And that's how we use trig functions to find the value of x. Let's use angles to find distances. So in this example, we have a park ranger whose eye level is 5 feet above the ground, and he measures that the angle of elevation to the top of the eruption of the Old Faith for Geyser is 34.6 degrees. So this man is looking at the top of this geyser, and the measure of that angle is 34.6 degrees. So if the ranger is standing 200 feet from the geyser's base, what is the height of the eruption to the nearest foot? So for these problems, the first thing we want to do is set up a trig function. Now what you need to figure out is, are you going to use sine, cosine, or tangent? So let's think. So we're going to use so... Katoa. Okay, let's start off with so. Let's see if that works out. Well, I'm working from this angle here. I'm trying to figure out the opposite side. So there's the O. But I don't know my hypotenuse. So I'm not going to use sine. Let's see if cosine works. So for cosine, I want to figure out what this side is. But all I know is my adjacent, which is 200, but I don't know my hypotenuse. So that's, that one's not going to work. Let's think about tangent. Well, for tangent, that's going to work because I want to figure out the opposite side, and I know my adjacent. So I'm going to set up my function. I'm going to find tangent of some angle theta equals the opposite over the adjacent. This is the most difficult part about this problem. Now at this point we just plug in the information we know. So we're going to figure out tangent. The angle, we know what it is, it's 34.6. The opposite side is x, and the adjacent side is 200. Now at this point we just isolate x. So my next step is isolate x. To do that, multiply both sides by 200. So when I do that, I'm going to multiply this side by 200 and this side by 200. So my equation is x equals 200 times the tangent of 34.6. Now, to solve this part, you have to use your calculator. I haven't taught you how to solve these without using your calculator yet. So use your calculator to plug this in. And when you do that, you will get x equals about 138. Now that's this value here, 138. But what they're asking for is to figure out not just x, but the height from here all the way to the bottom. So the question is what's happening in this space right here? Well, they said this guy's about five feet from his foot to his eye level. So to find the height of the entire geyser, you have to do 138 plus 5. So that means the height of the eruption was 143 feet tall.
So the last thing we want to do in this section is to talk about reciprocal trig functions. So at the beginning of the video, we learned about three functions. We learned about sine, we learned about cosine, and then we learned about tangent. We knew that sine was opposite over hypotenuse. We knew that cosine was adjacent over hypotenuse and the tangent was opposite over adjacent. So we, what we want to study now is the reciprocal to all of these three trig functions. But basically what you do is flip them all. But there are three new names. So the reciprocal of sine is what we call cosecant. The reciprocal of cosine is secant. And the reciprocal of tangent is cotangent. But since they're reciprocals, the ratios are just flipping these fractions. So the ratio of the sides for a cosecant are the hypotenuse over the opposite side. For secant, you just flip cosine. So it's the hypotenuse over the adjacent side. And then for cotangent, you just flip tangent. So it's adjacent over the opposite side. Now one way that I remembered this in the past is to think about it this way. So S becomes C, C becomes S, and tangent becomes cotangent. So sine becomes cosecant, cosine becomes secant, and then tangent's easy to remember, that just becomes cotangent. And then remember, they're reciprocals, so you just flip them. So in this example here, if we're going to look at sine, we know sine is just opposite over hypotenuse, so that's 4 over 5. So cosecant of the angle theta, all you do is just flip this. So it's 5 over 4. And that applies for the other three trig functions as well. So in this example, let's combine all the information that we've learned today and find the value of all six trigonometric functions for theta. Okay, so for this one, we know this side is 14, this side is 48, but we don't know the third side. So our first step is find the third side, and since it's a right triangle, we can find the third side using the Pythagorean Theorem. So the Pythagorean Theorem says that if we square each of the legs, that's equal to the hypotenuse squared. So we're going to do 14 squared plus 48 squared, and that's going to equal C squared. So our hypotenuse is going to be C. Now we do this out and we end up with 2,500 equals C squared. We take the square root of both sides and we're left with C equals 50. So that's our third side. So now that we know all three sides of our triangle, now we can find each ratio. Let's start off with the first ones that we know. Let's go with sine. So we're finding sine of theta, which is this angle here. So let's remember. So, ka, 
Toa. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite of sine is 48, and the hypotenuse is 50. We can simplify that to be 24 over 25. Now let's find the reciprocal to sine, which is cosecant, which we abbreviate like this, cosecant. So the cosecant of theta, we just flip sine. So it's easy enough. It's just 25 over 24. All right, and those are our first two. So next one, we, we did sine. That one's done. Let's do cosine. So cosine is adjacent, which is 14, over the hypotenuse, which is 50. We simplify that to be 7 over 25. So we have to find the reciprocal of cosine. So we did S to C, so C to S, which is secant, which we abbreviate as S E C. To find the secant, we just flip the cosine. So that becomes 25 over 7. All right, and the last one we're going to do is tangent. Now the tangent of theta is opposite which is 48 over adjacent, which is 14. Now that ratio becomes 24 over 7. The reciprocal of tangent is cotangent. And we just flip this to be 7 over 24. And that is all six trig functions for theta. So the first step was to find the third side. And then after that, we could find all the ratios for sine, cosine, tangent, and then we just flipped them to find their reciprocals. Alright, that's the end of our video for today. Thank you and take care.